left in their hearts tonight because I know a God who's got a whole lot more blessings to pour out in this place I know a God who's not tired tonight I know a God who can still pour out miracles and salvation and healings in this place if we can just muster up a little bit more praise tonight in our hearts God's going to do something great let us pray lift your hands and pray tonight Father we're so grateful and thankful God for your many blessings thank you for how you poured out great things this weekend Lord we thank you that you're not done yet tonight God as we praise you, as we lift up our voices, God, let your glory fill this house, God. Thank you for the word that's going to come forth and impact our lives and change us to be more like you, God. Anoint every song, every note that's played, every word that's spoken in this place, God. Let it be for your glory, God. We lift you up. We magnify you, oh God. You're wonderful in this house tonight, Jesus. Thank you for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, God. In the name of Jesus, we love you. Our 
our Father, Creator, you hold our hearts together. There is no one higher than you. Redeemer, Defender, our great and mighty Savior, there is no one higher than you. Always with us, gracious to forgive us. By your power, we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence, astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are lifted. Your beauty, your splendor, your glory knows no measure. There's no one higher than you. And you are always with us, gracious to forgive us. By your power, we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence, astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are lifted high in surrender. Your grace for me is always enough.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my footman in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. And what He did for me on Calvary is more than He knew. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission. All is at rest. Author of my tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story, and this is my soul. Praising my risen King and Savior all the day.
I'm glad that I serve a God who not only hears, but he answers. We don't, we're not going to get anything out of somebody that just hears us, and, and they can just ignore it, let it get in one ear and out the other. But we serve a God that hears our prayers, hears our cries. He hears everything. He knows our hearts, and he knows our minds, and he answers. We serve a great God tonight. Amen. We ask our ushers to come. Let's pray again. Father, we're so grateful for your many blessings, God. We ask, the Lord, you would use this offering for its intended purpose. Bless every gift and every giver, Lord, in Jesus' name. There were moments nothing can replace When heaven and earth meet face to face When a broken heart begins to change where it takes on flesh and his soul finds free. Where the upper fields are satisfied. And the unknown scars are reconciled. There's an open door to brand new life. Up close in the presence of the Savior, I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you fail, I'm not leaving, not leaving till you do, I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move, and I'm not leaving, not leaving till you Wanna see the blind receive their sight? Hear the praise of the voices start to rise. Every child of God baptized with fire. Right here in the presence of our healer. I just wanna be in the room. I wanna be in the room. Tear off the roof, lower me down, whatever it takes to give me to you. Tear off the roof, lower me down, whatever it takes to give me to you. Tear off the roof, lower me down, whatever takes to give me to you. Roll every stone, push through the crowd. God, I want to see you break through. Tear off the roof, lower me down. Whatever it takes to give me to you. Roll every stone, push through the crowd. God, I want to see you break through. I just want to be in the room, want to be in the room when you move. And I'm not leaving tell you to I don't want to miss it I just want to be in the room I want to be in the room when you move I'm not leaving I'm leaving till you do I'm glad I'm here in the room to see what he's going to do tonight Amen. You can all be seated except for Pastor Schultz. Stand and greet the congregation, brother. Good to see you. Thank you. 
it's always good to have our, our neighboring pastors in the section in the state be with us. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Carly, Sister Ashlyn, and Sister Natalie to come. They're going to sing tonight and worship with them as they sing.
God of Jacob, great I am, King of angels, Son of man, voice of many waters, song of heaven so louder than the thunder, make the glory Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Our Messiah, He is flesh and bone. You alone are worthy to open up the scroll. Like the Lamb, you suffered, but the Lion has arose. Hear, hear, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Hail, hail, Lion of Judah, let the Lion roar. Prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, oh valley. Be raised up, O mountain, be made low, O valley. Be raised up, O mountain, be made low, O valley. Be raised up, O mountain, be made low, O valley. Be raised up, O mountain, be made low, low. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. To all of our guests and friends that are with us tonight, we say welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. God has been doing some great things this weekend at AFA. We're excited about what God's going to do tonight. Glad that Brother Johnson is feeling well enough to be here. and He's going to be ministering to us in a minute. But God has surely been good to us. If you have been blessed this weekend, would you lift your hand and thank God for it right now? Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for what you've done, but God, thank you also for what you're about to do. We anticipate and expect it. 
You're going to move in the name of Jesus. We bind every power of the enemy that would try to stop it. Say that you must be gone, and we release the power of Jesus Christ into this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Didn't the ladies do good just a minute ago? Amen. God bless them. Why don't you put your hands together one more time and welcome our dear friend, Brother Robin Johnson. Give that all to Jesus, everybody, would you? Let's take 10 seconds right here. Clap our hands and shout the name that holds all power in heaven and earth. Somebody shout the name that you know is above every name. King Jesus. King Jesus. King of kings. Lord of all lords. Nobody like you. None other and none else. We're here tonight, and I sense and feel the presence of God. Certainly apologize about this morning. Uh, I had a rough night last night. My baby girl had it the night or two before, and I had it last night. But I know somebody prayed for me because today around, you did, thank you, about 4 o'clock today, uh, I just felt strength come back in my body. And, and that's nothing but God because... I already told Pastor I'm not going to make it tonight. I said, I don't think I'm going to make it tonight. And uh, my, my baby girl said, we want to go to church. We want to go worship God and sing. Uh, I said, well, I, don't, I, said, I don't think I can make it. I sat up on the edge of the bed, and I felt that beautiful presence of God that I feel here. Amen. There's nothing like it. If you've never experienced the real presence of God, then you wouldn't understand that we're not just being emotional. We're not just being excited. When God touches your life, it's undeniable. Nobody can do you like Jesus, I promise you that. Nobody can love you like the Lord. And, and I want you to know something. you got a wonderful pastor. I don't know if you know it, but I think you know it. We love and appreciate the O'Briens. And uh, they're always so kind to us. Thank you for loving on my family and, and treating us so good. We love you. Pastor Rick, Brother Chad, all of you great people. Good to see you, Brother Schultz. And uh, from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right, look over at somebody and tell them you are important to God. Turn, touch it, tell about two or three people, say you are important to God tonight. You are important to God tonight. You're in the VIP, very important Pentecostals. I'm going to read something to you out of the book of Mark and then the book of John. And uh, as much as strength as lies in my body, uh, I'm going to preach it out here tonight. I know that we do have water back there in that baptistry. And so we're ready to baptize people in the name of Jesus tonight. If you're here tonight and you want that, you can have it. If you're here tonight, you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. It's real. It's biblical. And there's a bunch of us that have already done it, and we're here to be a witness. It's one of the best things that can ever come into your life is to just let the presence of God fill you up. So I'm going to talk a little bit this evening about the Lord. Mark chapter number 16, verse number 9 and 12. And then I'll just read on down. I've got notes and notes and notes that go for days talking about Jesus. And uh, I hope I can get into the bottom of some of them with you tonight. Because I just feel like talking about Jesus a little bit tonight. That'd be all right. We just have a Jesus church service. Not a denomination. Not an organization. But an assembly that we come together to lift up Jesus tonight. Amen. Mark 16 and verse number 9 and 12. Uh, when Jesus was risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Look at your neighbor and say, wow. She got seven devils put out this lady. And verse 12 said, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. But the book of John picks that up in chapter 20 and verse 14 and says, When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. 
And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Who seekest thou? And she, supposing him to be a gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me from whence you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary. Something happens when he says your name. He previously just says woman, but now he says Mary. And she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. And Jesus saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But I go to my brethren, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and unto your God. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is enough. All you need is Jesus. Get Jesus. You got enough. Let's talk about Jesus a little bit tonight. Would y'all help me worship Jesus? If I worship Jesus, would you worship him with me? Let's pray unto the Lord here. We love you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the presence of the Holy One of Israel that's with us. We ask you, God, to anoint every man, woman, boy, girl here. We pray, God, that your spirit will be evident. Unlock the gifts of the spirit, the prophetic anointing, that you can do things here tonight, God, that only you and you alone could take credit for. We give you all of the praise and the glory and the honor. If you know that he is enough for whatever you're facing tonight, give him a hand praise. Give him a shout of victory. Oh, hallelujah. Make it louder than that stadium over there when they they shout for the Tigers. We're shouting for the Lion. Help me, Jesus. There's a spirit of praise in here tonight. You can be seated. Thank you for staying in so long. Jesus, there's nobody like Jesus. Now, let me say a couple things to you. I believe the whole Bible is extremely important. I believe the apostles' doctrine. I believe the book of Acts, all that. I believe it is of, of, of severity, of importance. If people glance over it and don't pay attention to what the apostles preached. But let me say something to you tonight. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have the apostolic doctrine. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have the book of Acts. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have Jesus' name baptism or the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. If you have any of that without Jesus, then you have religion. But if you have Jesus, you have a powerful experience, and it is a thing that the devil does not have an answer for. I come to tell you tonight that what we have in this room with us tonight, the devil does not have an answer for this. He just hopes that you don't understand the power that comes off of your lips when you say, in the name of Jesus. I, I don't know of anybody who has ever got anybody healed by saying, in the name of Buddha. I don't know one documented case. I don't know one documented case where somebody said, in the name of Allah, we pray healing and deliverance over your body. But let me tell you, me, just a country boy from Louisiana, I know case after case after case after case that the doctor said no, but the preacher said, in the name of Jesus, and cancer was dried up devils were cast out. Anybody here ever had an experience like that? Because something to know about Jesus. I just want to give you some of his characteristics tonight. There's some things about Jesus that stick out to me. One is, is that how much the common people love Jesus and how much the big shots hated him. You understand that? Jesus was in no gray area with anybody. Either he was greatly loved or greatly hated. Now, now that is a wonderful place to be if you're, if you're like me. I want to know who my friends are and who my enemies are. And Jesus lived his life in such a way until either you loved him or you hated him. There was no middle ground with him. Either you wanted to touch him and be around him or you wanted him crucified and dead. And, and here's a, a mighty thing about Jesus is that, is that Jesus was for the outcast. Je Jesus, Jesus was always looking for the people that everybody else had overlooked. 
Let me see if we got any of these people here tonight. Jesus was looking for the people who were struggling, who were trying to make it, who felt like I'm not good enough, but I'm trying to make it. He overlooked people who thought they had it all together and that they didn't need him and they were so holy and so great. But he went looking for people who said, God, I don't deserve it. Who am I? What am I? He looked for the lowly. He looked for the broken. He looked for the people that everybody else had cast out. Probably the reason that you're in here right now is Jesus at some point in your life come looking for you at a low moment. I'm glad to know that Jesus is not looking for big shots and big names and elite people. I'm glad to know he'll go to the uttermost to get to the guttermost to pull you. Anybody here say, I used to be an alcoholic or a drug addict or used to be involved and and and, and, see, and he said, that doesn't bother me. I'll walk right into your trouble and I'll deliver you and pull you out of every bit of it so when Jesus gets out of the grave when Jesus comes out on resurrection morning he does something that that's kind of mind altering if you don't know how Jesus works and operates uh, he, he's not uppity uppity he, he's not at all the Bible said he's meek and lowly Come unto me, he said, my burden's easy. My, my yoke and my burden, they're light. He, he's a lowly person. He's an humble person. And, 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 and when he gets out of the grave on resurrection morning, he does something that absolutely just blows me away. And that is when he comes out of the grave, the first person he appears to is Mary Magdalene, out of whom he casts seven devils. Now, 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 if you ask the majority of people, who do you think is the best suspect, uh, the best prospect for Jesus to appear, the first person when he gets out of the grave, who do you think he's going to go to first? Most people have said, I bet it's going to be Peter. I bet it's going to be Big Mouth Peter. I, it's, or it's going to be John, the writer of the book of Revelation. It's going to be one of these major, major apostles, one of these major hand-selected people. But that's not what he does. The first person that Jesus comes to when he gets out of the grave is a woman that everybody identifies and says she got a terrible past but she had to get delivered of seven devils can I preach and tell you it doesn't matter what your past is when you get to Jesus your past doesn't dictate your future he'll choose people like Mary to come to and he tells Mary I'm out and I need you to go tell my brethren that I'm alive and that I'm about to ascend unto my God your God my father your father he, he begins to tell Mary this is crazy he tells Mary you go tell my preachers that I'm alive now, now, I don't know how y'all feel about it in Ohio's. I'm just going to preach it, and then you throw tomatoes at me or whatever you want to do. But you better be careful when you say who God ain't going to use or who God can't work with or who God's not going to mess with. Can I go a little farther? You be careful when you say God can't use a woman. The first person he chose right here was a woman. He told a woman, go tell them me and I'm alive. They're getting back in the preaching business. My Lord, how mercy. I, I, I've learned something about the Lord. Is the Lord looks for people who have brokenness in them. So if you've never been broken, if you've never been broken, God is limited in what he can do with you. And he, he, he has repelled by pride, arrogance. But he is drawn in to humility. And Mary, this, this Mary, uh, he, he appears to her. That's, that's mind-altering to me because, because she got this messed up past. She, 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 she's, she's out here. Now, I'm just going to tell you what I think about Mary. Uh, I, I've, I've been uh, investigating this story and preaching about Mary for a couple of years now and, and, and how that her relationship with Jesus, how she was a worshiper. And I'm just going to tell you what I think. This is my, my, my evaluation of Mary. I I think Mary was a little bit. How, how y'all say it in Ohio? Mary, her Happy Meal don't have all the toys and French fries in it. Mary is just a little bit, you know, a couple, couple bricks short of a full wheelbarrow load. Now, y'all don't know nobody like that, but you see them at Christmas and Thanksgiving and had to sit and deal with them. 
Mary is so crazy. She's one of these people that shouts hallelujah when nobody else has said anything. Because here's why. She knows what God has done for her. Everybody else probably remembers her as, yeah, that's a lady who had seven devils. Key word, had, used to be, was, not anymore. You remember what Mary had, but Mary remembers what Jesus delivered her out of. And so she'll even go in the graveyard looking for Jesus. Even in the dark night, she comes in, in there to anoint the body, looking. She, this woman here does not give up. She gets up early and she stays up late. She cannot get enough of Jesus because she knows what he's done for her. Can I tell you one of the worst things you'll ever do, people of God, is let God do something in your life and then you forget about what he done for you. And you forget about what he brought you out of and start pointing other people say, what's their problem? Their problem is the same problem you had, except that now they got out, you got out, but you forgot that you had to get out. You weren't born saved. You was born on your way to hell, just like everybody else. I was preaching in, in Monroe, Louisiana, and, and there was this boy. He, he'd been in jail. He'd been incarcerated. His name was Eddie, and, and it, they, they could just say anything. Eddie was just been in church a short while. They could say, we're going to take up the offering tonight. Eddie was sitting right here on the front row. Eddie, they say, we're going to take up the offering. Eddie, whoa, hallelujah, offering time. Big church, you know, five, six hundred people. I watched that. And, and he would do that about anything. They could say anything. We're fixing to do X, Y, Z. Say, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Anything he could stand up and twirl and dance about. He's twirling. He's dancing. And, 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 and I'm just going to tell you, it was agitating me a little bit. I was thinking, you know, that's not very classy. And, and, and I'm, I'm waiting because I'm about to preach in a song or two. And I'm standing there and they're, they're gearing up and saying, and Eddie's out there twirling. He's, the, he's sweating. He's wiping sweat. He's twirling. He's dancing. He's running from one side to the other. And, and I, I thought to myself, I said, you know, that's a little excessive. That's a little too much. And I felt the Holy Ghost tap me on the shoulder and said, too much. He said, you think he's doing too much? He said, I think you're doing too little. He said, your problem is you forgot what I got you out of, but this boy remembers about a month ago he was in prison. He was in jail. He was on drugs. He, the problem is he knows what God got him out of, but you seem to forgot. I wish somebody would shake themselves and say, God, I need to remember. I, I need to have a good case of remembrance about what God, some of you were suicidal. Some of you shouldn't even be here right now. Some of you were going to blow your brains out, get divorced. But thank God the Lord had mercy on you. Here, you ought to be at least a hand raiser. Don't ever say, who God ain't going to use. Now, now I'm going to tell you, the minute that you think, oh, that person, God can't ever do nothing with them. Let me tell you how God is. He, he's a pundit. He got a sense of humor. He will take the very person that you said, that boy is a waste. That lady right there is too messed up in her. He'll take the very person that you count out. He will anoint them and raise them up and begin to use them like he did Mary just to show you and to show me we don't decide who God anoints and who God calls. That's some of you sitting here right now. You know why God's going to call you? It's not because you're qualified. It's not because you're the best. It's not because you got it all together. It's because everybody knows you ain't qualified and you don't have it all together. And if you do anything, they're going to say, that's got to be God. That's got to be God right there because that boy don't even know how to get in out of the right. How can he? I was preaching in Oklahoma in, in this 
uh, the pastor come over to the evangelist quarters after service and he, he'd asked me we were in like two or three weeks of revival uh, we were having people receive the Holy Ghost get just like a, a big influx of baptism and, and so we continued we kept extending this revival and, and so after about like the second third week we're in that revival he comes over one night after service to see me he comes in and, and, and the first thing he tells me says hey he said uh, there's a certain man said you you, you you may not know who I'm talking about said but but he he wants to know when this revival is going to be over. Because he wants to know when he can come back to church. Because he's had enough of you. And this is my job. I afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Let me say that to you again. I afflict comfortable people and comfort afflicted people. He, he said, he said, oh yeah, he said, he, he said, he not coming until you out of town. I said, well, you need to tell him he got about another month. I said, because God told me we're facing to pray some people through the Holy Ghost here. We're about to have a humongous revival. We just getting started. He said, yeah, he said, he said, uh, he said, oh, he said, I believe that. He said, I'm just saying, I can't believe he said that. I said, well, I believe he said it. I said, I'm not shocked at all. He, he said, what? I said, I'm not shocked one bit. I said, because, because his problem is he likes little boys. And he knows that I can discern that. And he is afraid that I'm going to call him out out here in front of God and everybody and expose him and reveal him to the church. I said, but the thing is, I'm not going to do that. That's not what my intentions are. That, that pastor said, my God, he started crying. He said, Brother Johnson, he said, that man was in my office just a couple months ago. And he said, he was confessing that to me. He said, I don't know why it is. He said, but I keep having these dreams and these images and these, the, these urges and these lust about things. I said, well, I said, here's the thing. Let me tell you how dumb he is. I said, first of all, he's worried about me. I said, but I'm not the one he needs to be worried about. I said, because I'm not the one that can do anything about what he's doing. I said, who he needs to be worried about is God who can save you or put you in the place you don't want to. Can I tell you, you don't need to worry about a preacher's opinion. You don't need to worry about church people's opinion. Your deal is between you and God. That, that preacher and me were talking and, and I, I had my phone sitting there when he come in. I, I was listening to a sermon and it was playing and, and me and him are having that discussion. He said, he said, he said, who is that preaching on, on that YouTube? I said, I said, you like, he said, man, he said, that, who is that? He said, that is anointed. He said, woo, that's anointed. I said, yes, yeah. this become one of my favorite preachers. He said, woo, my Lord. He said, uh, give me that. Let, let, let me see who that is. He said, I, I, I want to get that. Give me the name. He said, I want to go. I said, well, let's just listen to it some more for a minute. So we listen. To, and, and he's standing in there in the evangelist quarters in my living room. And he's shouting. He's like, my God. He said, I ain't never heard preaching like that. And he said, he said man, my, my goosebumps have goosebumps. He said, man, I, 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 I feel the hair on the back of my head. He said, I feel the Holy Ghost in that. Who is? I said, just give it another minute or two. He said, man, I, I said, just listen to what he's going to say next. And he's listening. He said, my Lord. He said, that is anointed preaching. That's a, that is a man of God. He said, I can hear it in his voice. He said, he said, he's dripping with the presence of God. He said, please tell me who that is so I can go back. I can listen to it. I said, okay. I said, here you go. I showed it to him. I said, here he is. It was a guy that God saved out of a gang he had tattoos going up one side of his head he had tattoos under his eyeballs he had them on top of his head on his face he's preaching and that preacher leaned back he said whoa I said hold on I said don't change your mind I said, don't change your mind. I said, you just stood there and said you felt the Holy Ghost. And that was God. And that, but now you see the vessel and you want to change your mind. God can, is going to raise up ex-drug addicts. God's going to raise up people that come out of immorality. He's going to raise up drunkards. And they're going to preach the gospel. And if we're not careful, we're going to sit back and say, how can he ever use them? Help me preach. Look at your neighbor and, and re, re, rephrase this to him. Tell him how you want to tell him. Say, there's a reason why God uses all these messed up people. Tell him, say, there's a reason God uses all these imperfect people. Say, the reason is because that's all he's got. 
because we're all messed up. We're all flawed. None of us are perfected yet. Be careful when you're pointing at somebody and say, who are they? What are they supposed to be? Who are they? Why are they shouting? Why are they praying? Honey, it ain't who we are. It's who Jesus is. We're not here hollering about how good we think we are. We were messed up, and he came to us. Now watch, because, because Jesus, if you know how the story works, and it's a little bit complicated, but I'm going to give you the, uh, the simplicity of it. Mary comes to the grave early, sees the stone rolled away. She's t she, she sees that and she goes back. She's told, go back and tell Peter, tell the disciples. She goes and tells them, hey, he's missing. He's not in that tomb anymore. And you got to read all the Gospels to get this whole narrative to understand it. They come back. Peter and John come back, and they stick their head. Peter and John run back because they think somebody stole the body. John gets there first. He looks in. He don't see Jesus in there. The stones rolled away. So out he goes. Peter finally gets there, sticks his head in. He sees Jesus is not there. And your Bible says it like this. And they went their way back into their own house. All they needed to see was nothing. <laughs> Mary, crazy Mary, she says, I'm not satisfied. I, I'm not good with just him not being in that grave anymore. She won't leave. She sticks her head back up in there again. The Bible even goes so far to say that she saw two angels, one standing at the head where Jesus was laying and one standing at the feet of where Jesus was laying. She sees two angels and she communicates with them and this is how crazy Mary is. Most of us have said, I went to church tonight, I saw two angels. Hallelujah. Woo. Two angels. Not Mary. Mary comes out and she's still hanging around the grave and she's saying, I gotta find Jesus. Yeah, but you just saw two angels. I'm not looking for angels. I'm looking for Jesus. I'm not looking for the angel of the Lord. I'm looking for the Lord of the angels. Can I preach and tell you apostolics? Quit looking for everything that ain't Jesus. I don't need to see a cloud. I don't need to see a vision. I don't need to see an angel. I need you. If I can see an angel, could I see Jesus? He's real. Because you don't see him don't mean he's not real. You don't see him because you haven't sought for him. You call for him. You seek for him. You'll find him. Now watch this. Because this is, this is pretty powerful. I'm going to show you how crazy Mary is. Mary, Mary, when, when Jesus is standing there, she thinks he's a gardener. And she's saying, uh, he said, ma'am, why are you weeping? What's the problem? And she says, it, she says, uh, the man in this grave, I'm looking for him. If you've put him somewhere, tell me where you laid him. I'll take him off your hands. Watch. Then Jesus turns to her and says, Mary. Whew. Now, if you ever have had the Lord say your name, and you may have not yet, and you don't have to as of yet, but one day when that trumpet sounds, you're going to hear your name called. Can't nobody else call your name like Jesus. Your mama can get close. I know what my mama says, Robin Edward Johnson. Yes, ma'am, I'm in trouble now. I'm going to get a beat down now. I know. Whenever the Lord said her name, Mary. She turned and she realized who he was. And Mary is so fanatical, Brother Rick. Mary is so off her rocker for Jesus. Mary is so simple in the way that she approaches this thing until Jesus has to give a warning to her. He says, listen, woman, do not touch me because I know how you are. You're a worshiper and you're a praiser and I show up and you're here. You're going to try to grab the hem of my garment. I know how you are, Mary. You're a radical, fanatical praiser. And if I reveal myself to you, you're going to be trying to grab a hold of me and touch me and handle me. And you can't do that yet. What I'm about to preach to you right now is absolutely another reason for you to fall in love with Jesus when you understand this. Because Jesus told her, you cannot touch me because I've not yet ascended. 
In other words, I was on my way out of the graveyard to do the most important thing of my mission. That is to present myself a living sacrifice before the mercy seat of heaven as a high priest. I'm on my way to go do it and here's this weeping, worshiping woman. Here I am. I got big things to do, you know, Jesus. He said, but I got a woman down here who is weeping and won't leave, who's worshiping and won't stop. She keeps seeking and searching. Here I am on my way out of here and I can't get out of here because this woman is constraining me. This is powerful. Watch. This is, this is, this is amazing because, because if you understand what Jesus was doing, he was fulfilling the Old Testament uh, law of high priests on the day of atonement. When they had to, you hear about it right now with Israel and the red heifer, how that you had, they had to go through certain washings before you can go into that, to that tabernacle. You can't just go in there. Jesus could not be touched. He was saying, you can't touch me because if, listen to me, if she touches Jesus, the whole deals off if she touches Jesus she contaminates the high priest he cannot be touched before he gets into the holy of holies watch this but Jesus knows if this woman touches me we have to start over from the virgin birth we got to go back to the Calvary's cross again we, but he said I cannot help it I'm about to take a big chance on a praiser because I don't overlook weepers I don't overlook work. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now but the Lord loves you enough to say I don't care. It doesn't matter what I have to do. I'm going to stop by and see you tonight because your hands are up, because your tears are running down your face, because you're desperate for me. I wish I had a desperate person here. I say, I, I, I got to find him. I, I got to find him. He's not in my, my marriage. He's not in my money. He's not in my, where are you, Jesus? That's a big contrast between what he told Thomas about eight days later when he walks through a wall, steps through a wall, Thomas said, if I don't see him and put my hands in his nail prints and in his side, I'm not going to believe it. Jesus said, that's what you need? Steps through the wall. Don't even need a door. Steps right through a wall. Jesus don't need a door. He said, I am the door to the sheep. He just steps right through a wall and tells Thomas, handle me. Put your hand in my side where that soldier pierced me. And then he says something very awesome. He says, handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see me have. Did you hear what he said? He said, handle me, touch me. I'm a real person. He said, I'm not a spirit. He said, I am real. I'm tangible. I'm touchable. I am not a spirit. I have flesh and I have bone. He didn't say I have flesh and blood. He said I got flesh and bone. Why didn't he say I got flesh and blood? Because he ain't got no more blood. Because the blood was all spilled out on Calvary where he shed that blood for you and for me. Can I tell you? He told Thomas come on, get a feel. Touch me all over. My Lord have mercy. He has ascended now we can touch him. You have not a high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of your infirmity. My, my friend who is uh, her and her husband, and he just passed away. We had his funeral at POA just uh, about a month ago before I left uh, to make this tour of duty. Marshall Xavier, his wife, and he, uh, many years back, they, they sewed into me. They mentored into me. And uh, they're just powerful, awesome people. But Vani was, was raised up a Hindu. She was a Hindu temple dancer and her daddy was a Hindu high priest they served thousands of gods thousands of gods and Vani was stricken with tumors all over her body ate up with tumors in Malaysia Asia and she's lighting incense they're praying to statues Doing, I done told you, ain't nobody ever got healed in the name of any of these gods. Young boy come up to me in the altar of the night. He said, hey, brother. He said, I was a Muslim before I come into this church. He said, but uh, he said, now I found Jesus. He said, but I want you to know I think that, that uh, they're both the same God. I said, what you talking about, Willis? 
He said, you know, Allah and Jehovah the same. I said, absolutely not. I said, because of the Allah said that God has no son. I said, and, and whenever you start looking at Allah, I said, Allah is a demonic principality that is here to ruin and to kill people and get people to die in his name. I said, no, I said, I'm here to tell you that Allah is not the same as Jehovah. I said, because I, I have enough proof to tell you this. I said, Jesus is the name that's above every name. I said, when did you ever hear Allah healing or saving or delivering or fixing anything? I said, he is a, a, a demonic principality of war and oppression I said but the true God is the way and the truth and the life watch Vonnie's laying on that hospital bed in Malaysia her husband went out to get lunch she's laying there dying tumors are popping up all over her body and she's laying in that bed she raised that button up on that bed and she said okay Jesus she said I tried all this other stuff tried all our gods and it looks like it's not working. She said, so if you're real, she said, now I know that you're not. I don't believe in this stuff. I don't believe in what all these Christians say. She said, but if you were real, then why don't you come in here and you heal me then? She said, no sooner than I got the words out of my mouth. She said, the window in my hospital room over here to the right. She said, a light went off that was bright like the sun. She said, a light started shining through my window. She said, a presence stepped through my window and stood at my bedside. She said, I didn't see him physically as Jesus. She said, but I heard him say these words. He said, I am Jesus and you are healed. And he repeated, I am Jesus and you are healed she said I felt virtue go into my body and come out of my body every tumor in her body dried up everything in her body how do you believe how do you believe that because she got healed that's how come the proof is in the results ladies and gentlemen I don't have to have seen Jesus I got evidence faith is the substance of things hoped for Her husband come back. He comes back in that hospital room and, and, and she's sitting up in the bed and he says, hey baby, he said, the doctor said, you gotta lay flat, lay down. She said, I can't lay flat. She said, I gotta tell you what's going on. He, he said, well, he said, you know, you're sick. She said, I'm not sick no more. He, he, he said, what are you talking about? She said, she said, Marshall, I'm gonna tell you. She said, I called out to Jesus a little while ago. A light shined through that window. She said, I heard an audible voice. I heard it with these ears. He said, I am Jesus and you are healed. And he repeated it, I am Jesus and you are healed. She said, I am healed. Marshall said, but baby, he said, we don't believe in Jesus. She said, she said, no. She said, you don't believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus now. Can I tell you, I don't care who in your family don't believe in Jesus. The fact that Bonnie said Jesus is real, that turned her husband's life around. I'm not going to back up on my experience with God because of a doubter or somebody that says, that could not have been Jesus. Then how do you explain I'm delivered and I'm healed? How do you explain the transformation? Uh, okay, I want to get to something with you here. I want to I get to something because... Because, and I'm going to ask the question of this church, how real is Jesus to you right now? Is he a character in a book? Is he just a Sunday school cartoon drawing? Or, or, is this Jesus, is he so real that if he wanted to do it again, he could walk through that wall. Stand on this platform. Look you lovely people in the eye and say, I am he. I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys to death and to hell and the grave. I am the alpha. I, I'm asking, I'm going to ask you, is Jesus so real if he wanted to do it? He could walk right down this aisle right now, manifest, appear, and tell you, I am here. Handle me and see, I am not a spirit. I am he that was and is and is to come. 
if your if your answer to that question is anything other than yes he can then that explains why you are where you're at because Jesus has to be that real to you because Jesus is that real if you go home and you research it tonight you'll find that and this just happened just a short while ago just a few months ago there are many Muslims who Jesus is appearing to them in dreams and in visions and they are coming to the Lord they are leaving ISIS they are leaving terrorist groups they are getting out of Islam and at the sake of them losing their life they are throwing their AK-47s down and picking up holy bibles you know why this happened in gaza right after the war happened right when everything happened on october the 7th and let me tell you i'm pro-israel i'm with israel i'm standing with israel but i'm not against the people of gaza either all of them they don't need to die they need the holy ghost a shame on some of us that we so pro-israel we want them to go kill everybody hey we don't need god to kill our enemies Okay, I'm going to shock y'all and wake y'all up, and then I'm going to finish this sermon, but I'm going to wake you up. Joe Biden needs the Holy Ghost. What he needs is not to be impeached. He needs to be baptized in Jesus' name, and he needs the Holy Ghost. Your worst enemy, your worst problem, the person who's the biggest thorn in your side, what they need is to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This Muslim gets up. He has a dream. He goes to his neighbor. He tells his neighbor, he says, this is in Gaza. He says, he, in CBN, uh, uh, recounting it, you can go look at the CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network. They tell the story uh, about 200 Muslim men that had the same encounter. This man tells his neighbor, he says, brother, you're not going to believe what happened to me last night. He said, I don't even believe in this stuff. He said, but he said, in the middle of my dream last night, he said, a man walked into my house shining with white apparel and he looked at me and said Allah is not the way and Muhammad is not the truth I am Jesus I am the way I am he that you are seeking said I felt something from him so much I woke up today and I realized this whole thing we've been living for all this time has never done anything for us I never felt peace like I felt when that Jesus showed up he said, please don't be mad at me for telling you that. He said, brother, that man started crying. He said, I'm not mad. He said, why? He said, because I had the same dream last night. They went to the next neighbor's house and said, we got to tell you what happened over here at our house. He said, before you tell me that, let me tell you something. He said, have you ever heard of Jesus? Yeah. He said, well, he come to me in my house. By the time they got done, 200 Muslim men. You know what Jesus is saying? If I can't get a preacher to go, I'll go myself. If I can't get a preacher to go to Gaza, I'll just go myself. He's that real, folks. Jesus can come. He can go. He can do what he wants to do. He's alive. If he's alive, he's alive. I was preaching in Winsboro, Louisiana, and, and th this girl there, her, and I, I, I'll, I'll start putting my landing gear down with this. She, uh, Wendy and Jessica, both of them were crystal meth heads, sisters, bad off. And, and one night we were having service, and, and Wendy and Jessica were up in the choir singing, and there was a man who was uh, uh, chief of police or something, I forget what it was, but he, he was a policeman and he'd been stricken by cancer and he heard about miracles and things that were happening in that revival. So he told some of his uh, uh, um, employees, policemen, officers, deputies, he said, well, I want y'all to go with me to church, to that revival tonight. So, so you got to understand, here we are with a bunch of ex-felony on their record crackheads. Here comes 10 policemen sitting in the church. They all like, is that for me? We in trouble? What is it? And that 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 officer looked over the aisle at a at another officer. He said, Is that Wendy up there in that choir? He said, That's Wendy. He said, You got to be kidding me. 
He said, do you know that I've arrested Wendy at least 20 times? He said, well, I've arrested her at least 10 times. He said, you ain't going to believe this. He said, he said, Chief, he said, that's Wendy, and that's her sister, Jessica, standing right there beside her. He said, I thought them girls were dead. He said, because I ain't seen nothing from them in about a year. He said, we used to have some kind of occurrence of running with them about every month or so. He said, I was wondering what happened to them. He said, well, here's what happened to them. He said, they done joined this church. Got he said, I can't. He said, they were skin and bones. They were nothing. They were about to blow away. They didn't even have their right mind. He said, he looked at that man. He said, this has got to be God. He said, for that girl right there to be standing up there in her right mind, singing and praising God, he said, I know God's real. Watch. Wendy had a baby. She had a little baby, like a nine, ten-month-old baby who was a crack baby. And she'd come into church with that baby. That baby would be laying on her, her shoulder right here. Could never raise itself up. Its eyes just blank stare. And it took me a while until they told me, said, you know, this baby has had uh, blood transfusions. And this baby is, is what you call a crack baby. Because what mama did without that baby ever doing it has been passed down through the bloodline. And this baby is fiending for a drug that it's never done. Be careful what you do with it getting your kids. Rewind. Let me say it again. Be careful what you don't do because you might keep it from getting in your kids. Let me tell you, and I, I hope I'm healed and I'm not just getting teased by the anointing. Because some of y'all know this. You get sick, you get to preach, and the anointing gets on you. You think you're better, and then you get finished, put the microphone down, and about pass out. And you're all, so I hope I'm really healed right now. Because I've been feeling pretty bad. I've been up all night, sick all night, laying up in that bed today, told pastor, I'm not coming. I'm not going to be able to come. And my daughter raised up. She said, Daddy, we're going to church. We want to sing. I said, my God, if i got to drag, push, or pull myself. Whenever your kids start saying they want to go to church, I don't care what you feel like. You say, let me put a shoe on. Let me just get myself together. If your kids is the one asking you, can we go to church? Woe be on us. If we say, no, I don't feel like it. I'll finish your watch. That crack baby's laying there. That baby cannot lift his head. It cannot do anything. And that, 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 that mother is bringing her in and out and laying it in the grandmother's arms. And one night, I'm preaching, talking about Jesus. And for whatever reason, they had an altar in that church. I was standing on the altar over here. I'll never forget. I'm saying Jesus can do anything. And I'm talking about miracles. I've seen Jesus do open blind eyes. I've seen him unlock deaf ears. I've seen him do all that. And you come too late to tell me. Your argument with me is going to fall on deaf ears of your own because I've seen him do it. And, and I, I'm preaching like that and that grandmother gets up with that crack baby and she walks that crack baby down the aisle and she hands that baby to me while I'm preaching. She says, preacher, then you ask the Lord to touch this baby. How about put you on the spot? She handed me that baby. And, and, and for some reason, I asked the church. I said, church, I said, if Jesus was here right now, I said, would he heal this baby? And everybody said, this would y'all say, yes. And I said it again. I said, if Jesus was here right now, would he heal this baby? Oh, yes. I said it three or four times. I said, if Jesus was here right now, would he heal this baby? Finally, after saying that over and over, I said it one last time. I said, if Jesus was here, would he heal this baby? That grandmother shouted out. She said, Brother Johnson, Jesus is here. Wherever two or three of us are gathered together in his name, there he, he is here. You don't see him, but he's here. I said, that's exactly right. And I said, if he was here, would he tell us, I just can't do this right now. I said, Lord, we're going to hold this baby up to you. And we're going to ask you, Jesus, since you're in this house, would you heal this baby tonight? Or should we go look for another? That's what John had. Should Are you he that should come or do we look for another? Somebody said, that might be offensive to God. You can't offend God. He don't have low self-esteem. He don't get his feelings on the edge of his sleeve. God don't say, oh, they're not believing in me because you don't believe in God don't make God say well I guess I'm not God he knows who he is baby that's Sunday 
following Sunday, walk into church. Wendy comes walking down that aisle tears in her eyes comes walking down that aisle with that baby that baby who's always laid on that mama's shoulder like this blank stare that baby's little arms are up and his head's up looking around I said what is this she said she said I got a testimony she said let me tell you what Jesus has done she said we went Tuesday after that Sunday night we went Tuesday to Monroe to get a blood transfusion again for this baby said the doctor come out and said y'all come over here Wendy I need to talk to you said well what's the problem said well we're, we're not going to do a, a, a blood transfusion today she said is that bad he said typically that would be bad he said but today this is good she said well what, why aren't you going to do it he said because I just got finished testing that blood and said your baby's blood even though though I saw all the negative reports for months he said I don't know how to describe it Wendy but that baby's blood is as pure as pure can be he said what have you been doing what have you been feeding that baby something's happened something's all she said I'm going to tell you what happened I brought him into the presence of Jesus the other night Hey, you can stand up right now and put your hands up in the presence of Jesus right now. You can lift your hands up to the Lord right now and say, Jesus, I'm bringing all my stuff into your presence. Let's stand up and do that all over this place this evening. Let's just stand up and do that all over this place this evening. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the goodness of the Lamb. Hallelujah, King Jesus. His beautiful presence here. Jesus. He's the Lord of hosts. Meaning he's the Lord of angel armies. That means he's the captain of the host of heaven. That means that at his command on Calvary, legions of angels could have swooped down there. He is in command. He is the he is the commander in chief of this church. He is in full command. He's in full command. I want to tell you something very prophetically right here before we start praying. Same way that happened with those Muslims. The same way it's happened to many other people. The Lord spoke to me sometime back and said, I'm going to begin to come to my people before I come for my people. I'm not saying you got to see Jesus to be saved. You don't. You don't. But I'm going to tell you what is happening. Person after person is saying, I had a dream. I, I had a man tell me the other day, he said, he said, I was sitting in my house, and he said, a, a man, a stranger, knocked on my door. He said, when that stranger knocked on my door, said he was wearing like a military uniform. He said, I was ready to end my life. This, he told me this a while back, but it happened years ago. He said, I was ready to end my life. He said, a man knocked on my door, and he said, when that man stood at my door, he said, sir, I just want to know if, if you have any breakfast. He said, I was, he said, I was fixing to cook breakfast. I told him, come on in. He said, I'll make you some breakfast. He said, I started talking to this man. He said, he said, I didn't put it all together at first. He said, but that man sitting at that table looked at me at my table. He said, I'm making him biscuits and gravy and giving him something to drink. He said, I never even thought to ask him what his name was. He said, I don't know how it, it happened, how it transpired. He said, but that man told me, he said, sir, you have a lot to live for. He said, you serve a very big God. He said, I just hope you know this. He said, I, I have been sent by here to tell you that your God is a big God. He said, I turned to look at that stranger and said, he was not sitting at my table. Said, poof, he was gone. He disappeared. Many of you are going to encounter the Lord's presence in greater dimensions. I believe this. I believe Jesus is coming to people. I believe he is showing himself to people. I believe he's showing up to people who don't understand the truth like some of you do. I believe he's showing up to them to let them know this is the way. Walk ye here in it. This is the way. Slip your hands up to the Lord all over this place. 
Just stretch your hands up high as you can unto the king for a moment. Let's just reach up to him for a moment. We're going to do some praying. We're going to ask God to fill people with his spirit tonight. We're going to ask the Lord Jesus to heal people tonight. Let's press in for just a moment. Let's press in for just the next 60 seconds. Just kind of press in right here. I reach for you, King Jesus. I need you. I'm so in need of you. Forty-five seconds, just like that. Raise the tempo, the volume on your praise for just a moment. Call his name, Jesus. Jesus. King Jesus. Jesus, I need you, Lord. I want you, God. Jesus, he was God manifested in the flesh. And I'm coming by here to tell you tonight, sweet people, when Jesus died on the cross, God did not die. I said when Jesus died on the cross, God did not die. God cannot die. God is a spirit. He cannot die. Jesus was God in a body. But when Jesus died and was laid in that tomb for three days, can I tell you, Jesus, the body of Christ, the body that God had prepared for himself, it was dead, but God was still on the throne. And your Bible says the spirit of Christ went back into that tomb on the third day. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost went in there on the third day, took that body, resurrected that body, and brought him back up out of that grave. And your Bible says it like this. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ dwell in your mortal body, he shall also quicken your mortal body. What does that mean? That means don't die without the Holy Ghost. Don't die without the Holy Ghost. If you die and you got the Holy Ghost, you're not really dead because he's going to raise you up. If you die and you have the Spirit of God, the same thing he done for Jesus, he's going to do for you. I need to tell all of you watching online, don't die without the Holy Ghost. If you die without the Holy Ghost, you just took a big chance, my friend. But if you have the Holy Ghost in you, he lives even when you're dead. God's going to do some healing around here. It's right over here on this side. There's some healing God's going to do. God's going to heal down in backbones tonight. God's going to do some healing down in, in spines tonight. God's going to do some healing in the back, in the vertebrae, in the disc tonight. God's going to do some healing like that. We're going to ask God to do that this evening. Would you like to let God just do what he can do? Do you believe this Jesus I've been preaching about right here can show himself strong? And he can fulfill what we preached about. He can do that. So when I walked out of here tonight to sit down here, the Lord started talking to me about healings he wanted to do tonight specifically. He said, I'm going to do things in the backbone, in the structure. I'm going to do things in the spine. I'm going to do things in the lumbar and in the disc that no doctor can take credit for and say they did it. When this happens, they're going to have to say that was surely the Lord Jesus. There's no way around it. And listen to me. We're going to pray a couple simple prayers and we're going to let the Lord do this. Especially right over here. If you're in here and you're having a problem in your back and your spine and you need the Lord to heal that, take the discomfort out of you, realignment, get the nerves straight so you can rest and sleep and have health in your body. If you're dealing with something like that tonight, take your right hand and lift it up to the Lord just as high as you can. Lift it just as high as you can, just as high as you can. Hallelujah, hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now look at that, all right over here in front of me where I'm standing. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven more, twelve. Right over here in this area right here. I want all of you to, while you've got your hands up towards the Lord, just like that in the air right now, I want you to step out here in this aisle right over here. Keep your hands up. Step in this aisle right here. Every one of you that need that kind of miracle, I want you to step out here in that aisle. Put your hands up towards the Lord. That's beautiful. That's good. We're all in this together. We're going to ask God to do it. Lift both of your hands up unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Everybody else kind of stretch your hand towards these people right now. Put your hands over here towards these people. Oh, Jesus. The Bible said we shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Who over here was in some kind of an accident? You were in an accident, left you with a problem in your back. Wave your hand a little bit. You've been in an accident right here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody else I'm going to get to you too right here. I'm going to just start praying for you. Why I'm praying for you. There's others of you that God's going to just start healing you. Why I'm praying for this man. This man took a hit. He was in an accident. Hallelujah. A couple of years ago, looks like. I'm going to lay hands on him. I'm going to pray on him in the name of Jesus. Only God can know these things. Only God can reveal these things. So, Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch my brother. My brother has come to you, God, and you begin turning his life around. Lord Jesus, you have took his life that looked like an accident, and you have reconformed it into your likeness and your image. You have changed his mind. You've changed his passions. Lord, you've reached into his heart, took the stony heart out. You put a heart of love on the inside of him. Now, tonight, God, I pray that you go back and you heal this injury in his body. That it can be a testimony to give the glory to God in the name of Jesus. That's right, my brother. Pray it out right there in the Holy Ghost. Pray it out right there in the Holy Ghost. I'm laying my hands on him, but the rest of you, let Jesus lay his hand on you right now. Be healed of it right there. Be healed of it right there. Be healed of it right there, Pastor. I lay hands on you. In the name of Jesus, the healing virtue of the Holy Ghost coming to your body right there. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. There's some of you that have been having to take a pill to sleep. You've been having to take a pill so you can rest because the pain gets so great in you. I want you just to try without it tonight. I want you to try without it tonight. I want you to try without it. Give the Lord a chance. I touch you right here, sweet lady. I touch you in the name of Jesus. God's medicating you right now. God's medicating you right there. Here, lady, you just take your hand, put it on her right here like that. In the name of Jesus, I see it highlighting through you. What no medicine can do, what no pill could do, what no doctor could do, the hand of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I see the presence of God over this lady right now. Healing energy flowing through her life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just hang in here with them for just a moment. I feel God doing a beautiful work here. We're just waiting on it. We're just waiting in here on it. We're just kind of doing this in mass so we can get uh, several people at a time. There's some of you in here, God's going into your colon right now. God's going into your colon. You got a, 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 a problem going on in there. There's some irregularity going on in your bowels and in your, in your colon area, but God's going to dry it up and heal it tonight. There's a healing going to happen in it. The enemy would like this thing to manifest and become a whole lot worse and become a problem uh, that would become cancerous in nature, but Jesus can block all that tonight I said the Lord can block all that tonight and and I, I I believe I'm hearing from the Lord right now to tell there's a couple of you but I'm going to tell you right now if you're having that kind of problem I'm going to say one two three when I say three I want you to as fast as you can make your way right up here just right here if you're having a problem that's going on in your colon if you're having a problem she comes already she's like I don't I don't want to wait hallelujah hallelujah let me let me have your hand mama there's somebody else I'll wait on you here for just a moment you have a problem like that. I'm just going to take 
take your own hand, put it on your stomach right there. Here it come right here. I knew there was another one. Come on, my brother. In the name of Jesus. Now you just pray with me, church. We say no cancer. Jesus, your name is above every other name. Lord, we're going to lay hands on these people in your name, Jesus. You are the healer. You're the miracle worker. And we ask you tonight, God, to let your virtue go into this sweet lady's body right now. Let all this discomfort, all of this like your stomach and knots, all of this pain and discomfort that's been on the inside of you, I command it to release you and to let you go tonight. I prophesy and speak healing over you, woman, in the name of Jesus right there. Ah, Rabbi Katisa Leketeshe Lahatasa. Jesus, you're a miracle worker. Jesus, I feel his pre Anybody just sense the presence of God has just walked in here with us? Let me ask you this question. Is there anybody here tonight that said, I'm not satisfied with what I got? I want more of Jesus. Let me see you. Is there anybody that says, I want more of this? I'm not satisfied that I talked in tongues one time. I need a good experience with God. That's undone. Anybody say that? I need something from you, G. I'm like Mary. I'm not going to leave. If that's you, come to the front of this church right now. I invite you. All of you that just waved your hand said, I am not satisfied with what I got. I need more of this. I need more of the Holy Ghost. If you have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, if you've never spoken in other tongues, get yourself to the front of this building with us right now. Come on, if you've never received the presence of God, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. Bring them on down. Come on down. That's beautiful. Come on. God's going to give you more. Take a few steps in. They're coming in behind you right there. Come on in. Come on in. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Beautiful presence of God's here. Come on down. 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 What's this lady's name, Shelly? Donna, raise your hands up high, Donna, to the Lord. The Lord has spared Donna. The Lord has brought Donna out of a horrible place. But God is about to put you in a beautiful place. When I lay hands on you, Donna, the Holy Ghost, it's going to be poured out all over you right there. There you go, Donna. I want you to speak that out, girl. That's, hey, there you go. In the name of Jesus. There you go, Donna. That's the Holy Ghost speaking through you. There you go, Donna. I lock it right there out of your mouth. There you go. Let that tongue go. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost in your life. There you go, Donna. Speak that out loud. Oh, you need more of God. Raise up your hands right now. Tell him, Lord, give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. I want more, Jesus. I want more, Jesus. I want more, Jesus. 